Hello, I'm Dr. Erin. Welcome or welcome back to my channel on emergency medicine and wilderness medicine moulage. Quick financial disclaimer. I have no financial disclaimers. No one is paying me for anything. Nothing I say reflects the views of my employer, etc., etc. Now let's have some fun. Today we're going to be covering my favorite subject, lacerations. To get started, you're going to need some sort of 3D material and a spatula to manipulate it with as well as the paints that we talked about in our previous episode. Though a good cheat to speed things along is to have a foundation that is close to your subject's skin tone. Burns do use the similar supplies, but we'll cover those in the next episode. Also like last episode, you have options. The three most common materials used are scar wax, latex, and silicone, each with their advantages and disadvantages. First up is scar wax. For a simple laceration, you're going to need the scar wax itself, a spatula, some petroleum jelly, paint, and some coagulated fake blood. Use an adhesive like spirit gum or prosade if you plan a big laceration or tend to use a lot of petroleum jelly, as both of these can make it harder for it to stick. You'll find the supplies required and the methods are very similar between all three materials. Scar wax is basically the Play-Doh of moulage. It is the fastest because it is both the closest to skin color at baseline and it has no drying time. The downside being this is because it doesn't really dry. It stays malleable so you can always fix it, but that also means it's the easiest to mess up if you bump into it. Therefore, it's best for anything that's not really going to move or get touched and not on any joints. It's very sticky, so you're going to want to use petroleum jelly, like Vaseline, to protect the tools you use to mold it. So first, if you tend to use a lot of Vaseline or if you plan to make a laceration that's going to stay on for a long time, apply a adhesive like spirit gum or Prosade first to make sure that it sticks to the skin better or for longer. Next, roll a sausage out of scar wax and apply it where you want the laceration. Then coat your spatula in petroleum jelly and smooth out the edges of the scar wax. Then use one edge of the spatula to cut a line down the middle of the scar wax and pry it open a little, taking care not to catch and distort the edges too much. For coloring, the quickest head start is to use foundation similar to a person's skin tone as a base. Then you can add a touch of red for inflammation if desired. Paint the inside of the wound starting with a light coat of red. Then you can add darker red, in other words more concentrated pigment around the edges for more depth. Add some coagulated blood and you're all done. And here are our results. Next up is latex. Try it on a small area of skin first, as latex is a common allergy. Latex starts white and dries clear, though there are some quote-unquote skin tone ones. I prefer clear for the ability to make skin flaps later, and because the skin tone is not generally very close to my actual skin tone. This latex is essentially liquid rubber. As such, it's very thin and benefits from using something more substantial like tissues or toilet paper or cotton balls for substance. It's very sticky and thus does not require an adhesive. So for a laceration, you're going to paint a layer of latex into the area desired, then stick down two thin strips of cotton or toilet paper. Add more latex on top, best in a couple layers. At uh, disadvantage, these layers do take a minute to dry, so this version does take the longest. It's faster with a hair dryer or something similar to blow on it. I have a heat gun, which you may see me using, if not in this video, but in later when I'm doing the burns. And now you can pry it open a little bit. White is very far off the skin tone. 
them as soon as I blend under it. Shocking, I know. So sometimes I like to start with a layer of red for my foundation. That said, you have to wait for the red to dry before you apply the next layer uh, if you don't want the colors blending like they do where uh, metaling would get too early here. And then after the foundation, you continue adding colors for better color matching. Uh, and like in the previous wound, we'll color the inside in shades of red and add some fine blue blood. One of the neat things about latex is that it dries in this thin, stretchy sheet, and therefore it's the go-to material for skin flats. Great for burns or any type of degloving. For more on this, see the next episode about burns. Add some coagulated blood, and all done! One trick to make the blood smear more naturally and not beat up on the rubber is to add a drop of dish soap. And here is our finished latex laceration. As you can see, unlike the scar wax, latex dries and will not distort or tear. Lastly, my favorite, we have silicone. A little bit more expensive, it comes in two parts, A and B, and you mix roughly equal amounts, mold it, and then it dries into a hard rubber. It has its own body to it, like scar wax, but it actually dries and stays very pretty. You can even hold onto what we make and use it as a pre-made prosthetic later, uh, in, if you apply it with spirit gum or prosade. It will stick where you apply it the first time, though if you're reusing it, you'll need an adhesive then. After you mix the two parts, uh, apply with a spatula, smooth the edges down, and divide the middle, like scar wax. Silicone dries into a harder, more rigid rubber than latex and again is very resistant to wear and tear. And this is the finished silicone laceration. Another painting method is to add color variation by sort of spraying colors in a fine mist by flicking the end of a paintbrush. And you can see the difference here. And there you have it, simple lacerations. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison in the three mediums and supply prices. This is the point where I do recommend just getting a starter kit because it's generally cheaper than buying the supplies individually. Uh, unless you're buying them for multiple people and you can split up the cost of, say, the spatulas or a bigger bottle of latex, something like that. At a bare minimum, you'll want the color wheel, your 3D medium, and a spatula. That's all for this episode. Again, I'm Dr. Erin, and join us next time for Burns.